Let's look at plant pigments from this video. Don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this. In this video, we're going to learn what is a pigment, functions of pigments, pigment types including chlorophylls, carotenoids, flavonoids, betalanes, and phytochromes. Last but not least, pigment extraction of pigments by chromatography. So what's a pigment? Simple answer pigments are colored substances produced by organisms that are important in controlling photosynthesis, growth, and development. Have you ever thought why do these leaves look green and yellowing when aging? Chlorophylls absorb other wavelengths while reflecting green, and that's why we can see the leaves in green. With aging, chlorophylls are degraded, and production is decreasing, now the accessory pigment get unmasked and show their colors. This is the same happening during fall and temperate climates. Isn't it wonderful? All biological pigments selectively absorb certain wavelengths of light, while reflecting others. In this figure, you can see the absorption spectrum for chlorophyll A, B and beta carotene. Note, at which wavelengths they have maximum and minimum absorptions. Not only giving colors to leaves, but also they perform important functions. For instance, controlling photosynthesis by absorbing light energy, giving colors to flowers and fruits, indicating ripening process of fruits, further pigments helps pollination and dispersal process by attracting pollinators, and fruit dispersing animals or birds by different colors during flowering and fruit ripening. Pigments also indicate aging of leaves and beautifying environment like we mentioned before. Further, phytochromes like pigments help seed germination. Some pigments can protect us and themselves from UV light, as they can absorb them, also protect from microbes as some pigments have antimicrobial properties or can repel microbes and so on. Some pigments are precursors for hormones, for instance, carotenoids is a precursor for abscisic acid biosynthesis. Depending on the functions during light absorption, there are two types of pigments mainly. We think you can remember P680 and P700 reaction centers in photosystems in grana in light reaction. If you need to know more about that, watch our video on photosynthesis. So, the principal pigment is the molecule that is located at the reaction center of the photosystem which is a chlorophyll molecule. Sunlight captured by other molecules in a photosystem are donated to the primary electron acceptor to be contributed to light reaction in photosynthesis. Accessory pigments are the second category. These are light-absorbing molecules that function in tandem with chlorophyll and photosynthetic organisms such as flavonoids, carotenoids and so on. Pigments are also categorized based on their structure and function in plants. First one is chlorophylls. This word is derived from Greek. Chloros mean green and phyllin mean leaves. Chlorophylls are primary pigment in plants that directly absorb light. They absorb blue and red wavelengths of light while reflecting a majority of green. Chlorophyll molecule has a porphyrin ring and a hydrophobic tail. The porphyrin ring of chlorophyll is where light energy is absorbed. A porphyrin is a large ring molecule consisting of four pyroles, which are smaller rings made from four carbons and one nitrogen. These pyrrole molecules are connected together through a series of single and double bonds which forms the molecule into a large ring. These four rings are coordinated to a central atom. This is very similar in structure to the heme group found in hemoglobin, except that in heme the central atom is iron, whereas in chlorophyll it is magnesium. Chlorophyll molecules embedded in the thylakoid membrane absorb light energy and get excited. Now they become unstable and come to the ground state. They release these energy while coming to the ground state. If you need to know more about that, watch our video on photosynthesis. The numbers of naturally occurring chlorophylls may not yet be fully known. Initially, chlorophyll was classified into four, chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, chlorophyll C, and chlorophyll D. But later, a new type of chlorophyll was discovered within stromatolite, a hard rock structure made by cyanobacteria, in Western Australia which was named as chlorophyll F. Thus, eventually chlorophyll was divided into five classes, including A, B, C, D, and F. By today, around eight types of chlorophylls have been recorded including chlorophyll A, B, C, D, F, protochlorophyll, bacteria chlorophyll, and chlorobium chlorophyll. In this slide you can see the structures of several chlorophyll molecules. Let's see the difference between chlorophyll A and B. Both chlorophyll A and B have very similar structures. Both are tadpole-shaped due to a hydrophobic tail and hydrophilic head. 
The head consists of a porphyrin ring, with magnesium in the center. Chlorophyll A and B differ in only one atom in a side chain on the third carbon. Chlorophyll B has an aldehyde, CHO, side chain at this carbon position as compared to the methyl group, C.H. 3. For chlorophyll A. This difference in structure contributes to their varying light absorption properties. In this slide we are showing you the distribution of these chlorophylls in different organisms. First figure show the satellite map of chlorophylls on water surface. Isn't it wonderful? We hope you all have seen some places of the ocean turned into green color during daytime which means the photosynthetic microscopic algae-like organisms come to water surfaces to absorb light. In the next table you can see how these chlorophylls are distributed among organisms. This is a good example to show the evolution or these organisms. Let's talk about carotenoids now. These are also called tetraterpenoids. These are non-nitrogenous, organic pigments found in algae, bacteria, fungi in vivid colors such as red, orange, or yellow. They perform important functions. They act as accessory pigments to absorb blue, green spectrum during photosynthesis and increase the absorption range. They place an active role in photoprotection to prevent photooxidative damage to chlorophylls by quenching excited chlorophyll molecule as well as singlet oxygen scavenging. They also serve as protein structural elements. Carotenoids also provide precursors for the biosynthesis of phytohormones of cysic acid and strigolactones. Carotenoid derivatives can act as signaling molecules in response to environmental and developmental cues or serve as regulators of plant growth. Not only that, the massive accumulation of carotenoids in many flowers, fruits, and roots contributes to their vivid orange, yellow, or red colors, and has significant ecological and agronomical value. Carotenoid biosynthesis starts with the synthesis of the basic C5 building blocks of isopentenyl pyrophosphate, or IPP, and its allylic isomer dimethylyl pyrophosphate, or DMAP, via the plastid localized methylerythritol 4 phosphate, or MEP, pathway. There are two types of carotenoids, carotene and xanthophylls. These are similar in structure, but xanthophylls contain oxygen atoms while carotenes are purely hydrocarbons, which do not contain oxygen. Their content of oxygen causes xanthophylls to be more polar, in molecular structure, than carotenes. The name is from Greek xanthos mean yellow and phylon means leaves. Carotene are orange color. We hope you can remember carrots. Next category of pigments is flavonoids. These are a class of polyphenolic secondary metabolites found in plants. Around 3,000 different flavonoids have been described. They appear in red to blue, according to pH. Flavonoids can be found in vacuoles and thus water-soluble. Flavonoids also play important functions. They provide color to leaves, plant stem, roots, flowers, fruits. By giving colors, helps attracting pollinators and seed dispersers. They also aid in UV protection by absorbing light in UV wavelength. Their biosynthesis is generally activated after UV exposure. That's why after UV radiation, more flavonoids get accumulated. Further, act as chemical messengers, physiological regulators, and cell cycle inhibitors. Regulating plant development and establishing symbiotic relationship in legumes during nitrogen fixation are also important functions performed by flavonoids. Basic skeleton structure of flavonoids is a 15-carbon skeleton. Two phenyl rings, denoted by A and B, and a heterocyclic ring denoted by C, the ring containing the embedded oxygen. There are six types of flavonoids including, flavanols, flavanols, isoflavones, anthocyanins, flavanones, and flavones. This slide also show flavonoid classes, subclasses, and natural sources. Next group of pigment is betalanes that has nitrogen. These are synthesized from tyrosine, found in vacuoles of epidermal and sub-epidermal tissues and water-soluble. These are red-purple, yellow-orange pigments and can be found in flowers, fruits, fungi. These pigments are found in plants of the caryophyllales order. Cactus, amaranth and beetroots are good examples. These are classified into two groups including beta-cyanins and anthocyanins. Beta-cyanins are red to violet color while anthocyanins are blue to red or yellow to orange color. In this figure you can see their absorption spectrum and which plants you can see them. This slide also shows different groups of beta-cyanins and betaxanthins, their structure and the examples. In this slide, you can find the names of those chemical groups further. 
Phytochromes are bilin binding photosensory receptors found in plants, bacteria and fungi used to detect light to control development of the organisms over a broad range of environmental conditions and throughout the whole life cycle. They are sensitive to light in the red and far red region of the visible spectrum and can be classed as either type I, which are activated by far red light, or type II that are activated by red light. Phytochromes consist of a protein, covalently linked to a light-sensing bilin chromophore. The protein part comprises two identical chains, A and B. This is a soluble chromoprotein consisting of the N-terminal photosensory and C-terminal dimerization moieties. The phytochromes are signal-transducing photoreceptors that convert between inactive and active forms in response to different wavelengths of light. This conversion is used to synchronize plant development to the exigencies of the light environment. To control many physiological responses, phytochromes directly modulate gene expression. A key regulatory event in this signal transduction pathway is the light-controlled translocation of the photoreceptor from the cytoplasm into the nucleus. Light-induced conformational changes enable phytochromes to interact with signaling partners, in particular transcription factors or proteins that regulate them, resulting in large-scale transcriptional reprogramming. Phytochromes are synthesized in their PR conformation. Upon light activation they are converted to their active PFR conformation, which accumulates in the nucleus. In sunlight characterized by a high R slash FR ratio the phytochromes are mostly in their PFR conformation. PFR specifically interacts with PF transcription factors leading to their proteolytic degradation. In the shade, which leads to a reduction of the R slash FR ratio, the phytochrome photoequilibrium is pushed towards the PR conformer. PRB no longer interacts with PF transcription factors leading to their accumulation and transcription of shade marker genes. Photomorphogenesis or the development of a seedling in the light and scotomorphogenesis or the development of a seedling in the dark are two key events that control plant development, from seed germination to flowering and senescence. A group of wavelength-specific photoreceptors including phytochromes, E3 ubiquitin ligases, and various transcription factors work together to regulate these two critical processes. Phytochromes are the main photoreceptors in plants for perceiving red slash far red light and transducing the light signals to downstream factors that regulate the gene expression network for photomorphogenic development. Scotomorphogenesis is achieved by the active repression of the genes that would lead to deetiolation and photomorphogenic development. This process is regulated by the COP1 SPA1E3 ligase complex that targets transcription factors like HY5 for degradation by the proteasome. Fluorogen function in the floral transition in plants. Plants recognize day length by the integration of light signaling pathways perceived by leaves and the molecular outputs from circadian clock oscillations. Phytochromes mediate the photoperiodic control of flowering in pants via the action of fluorogen. In this slide we are summarizing all the functions of phytochromes in plants. If you're interested in working on these pigments there is a simple and interesting experiment you could do to differentiate the properties or characters of these pigments in a plant leaf. Paper chromatography is one method for testing the purity of compounds and identifying substances. Paper chromatography is a useful technique because it is relatively quick and requires only small quantities of material. Separations in paper chromatography involve the principle of partition. As shown in the diagram, you can extract the pigments in a solvent such as acetone and then run in a chromatography paper as shown in this simple setup. These pigments will get separated into bands depending on their characters such as polarity. You can read more on this procedure in articles. They have wide variety of methods describes. Not only chromatography, you'll find different other techniques to study these pigments. We hope you leaned something on plant pigments out from our video. Don't forget to subscribe us to watch more and lean more like this. Feel free to let us know your comments as well. Thank you so much.